Okay, well, it's 7 o'clock, so we will call this meeting to order the regularly scheduled meeting of the Development Review Board, July 21st, 2020. And we are, we have one application on the agenda. Um, that being, sorry, application 20-038, Radius Point Property LLC for a waiver. So take it away. Excuse oh, me, guess Farl. where you went, sorry. Excuse me, Farl. Yeah. Uh, I originally had this advertised as both Radius Point and Lagu Inc. Lagu Inc. has sold their um, uh, their their rights to this property, and so they are no longer a. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, we also need to swear in those that are going to give testimony. So Josh is, I, Josh is joining right now. Oh, good. All right, well, we'll go ahead. So, so the two uh, representatives of the applicant and Tom, I assume will be giving testimony. So um, do you swear under penalty of perjury, perjury to tell the truth and the whole truth on the matters before this board tonight on this application? I do. I do. I do. I, I do. Okay, so I guess you can just begin by giving giving us the sort of overview and we'll walk through the criteria. This, as I understand it, there's four criteria, correct, Tom? Correct. And so, but first, just explain uh, what's happening. Sure, so this is Derek Pedley speaking. I'll give you a, a, a quick background. Um, Essex Equipment and Rental has been in Essex, Vermont for over 30 years, a well-established business, and um, sees the need for uh, that type of facility in the center of Vermont area, so has purchased two buildings at 322 Industrial Lane, and the other address escapes in both. They're right next to each, right next door to each other, two buildings from the Legu family, Chip and um, Henry. Um, so we purchased those, closed on the property, We've been looking at the flow um, of the lot, basically um, in and out where we will see customers um, arriving, customers leaving, and part of our business obviously is, is people returning with equipment that's been rented and the need to fuel that equipment up um, and charge them accordingly. So in the interest of safety, um, traffic flow, and efficiency, we feel that the 25-foot setback row from the property line would, would essentially put those tanks right into the flow, basically, of everything. Uh, vehicles coming in, um, our employees working on rental returns, and also delivery of, of items to the store. So, um, being this being an industrial zone, uh, I don't think that you know fuel tanks are really an eyesore. I think um, this would this would definitely give us the best flow, the best safety, and efficiency for for the store itself. Can Can you tell me this is Can you tell me what is next door? On the side of the tank. So, sure. So I would call that to the south for a better direction. Um, to the south of it is a vacant lot, and then beyond that, I believe it's Talmont Beverage. Okay. Who owns the vacant lot? I don't know the answer to that. It's uh, uh, I do, uh, Robert. Oh. Hold on. Robert and Fioletti. Uh, Andrea Letty. Andrea yeah. Letty, yeah. And they own several uh, commercial properties in the town of Berlin. 
they were notified of this meeting as a contiguous property owner. Okay. And, and for the record, I'm excuse, uh, excuse me, the other uh, building number, uh, uh, I gotta pull back up, is 442 Industrial Lane. Yes, thank you, Tom. So, um, before, does, we, we've, obviously we've read your, what's in your application. Um, we will, so the, the criteria for the waiver, first of all, does anybody have any other questions? I, I do. Okay. What is the current use of the property? So previously the property, this is their uh, Pedley with Essex equipment. So previously the property was rented by the state of Vermont from the Lagues. Um, it's hard to say what they were doing. Some sort of testing um, in the building. Uh, a lot of lab type equipment was in there. Um, so it's hard to say what they were actually doing. Um, but our proposal is, is as I said earlier, uh, a rental business. Um, so renting to small contractors, homeowners, someone that needs a piece of equipment for the weekend or um, any sort of rental situation. So I have a question for Tom. Is this a change of use? You may, Paul, you may recall yeah. that in, in January, February, when it was still under the ownership of Lazuri Inc. Uh, they came in for a change of use on the property and was granted that by the uh, Development Review Board. Okay. And the folks from Essex Equipment participated in that uh, application as well. Okay, I wasn't present at that, that meeting. Okay, so that's good to know. And and as far as that application, we were just looking at the use, right? I mean, did we, I'm, I'm just wondering if anything is, uh, if what the, what that looked like in terms of the traffic flow and whatnot, and I didn't have that, that to look at. Um, but are there major changes, is, is the change simply just moving the, the lane or? So the, um, let me let me state it this way. So if we kept the 25 foot setback um, from the property line, that would put these fuel tanks into the main flow of traffic on the property. Okay. So by so by asking for a 50 percent reduction would keep them back in the area, which is safe for employees, uh, customers, and, and keeps it out of the traffic flow of the the property itself. The applicant did submit a uh, drawing of the of the lot, a aerial photograph of the lot with where the proposed tanks are uh, anticipated to be located. Right. Well, where are they now? Or they do they do not exist now? They do not exist. Okay. And I and I I, I probably was remiss in stating that these tanks are double wall uh, tanks. They'll be above ground. Um, with all the pertinent safety devices on them, um, interstitial containment of any leak that might happen in the tank. Um, so this is a really good safe package that we put together. Mr. Tour, these can be diesel or gasoline? So we'll have three tanks. Um, one will be 550 gallons, uh, which will be diesel, and then two 300 gallons tanks which will be um, 300 gasoline and 300 kerosene. And the reason we need kerosene is in the wintertime, we rent out a lot of, of heaters or to contractors and those require the kerosene. Okay. Carmen, Carla, this, this is Josh. I got in here late. Um, Hi, Josh. It looks like you have a quorum. So as an alternate, I think I'll just bow out. But I, I, I missed part of the conversation here. So you've got enough people. Okay, that's fine. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, yeah, take care. Bye. I just want to clarify, Tom. I do see the photo that they submitted. I just wasn't didn't have it to compare to anything that was submitted previously. I, w I wasn't sure if there was anything that we needed to look at from that previous application, but I guess uh, we really don't. Okay. No. Um, 
So further questions before we just sort of walk through the criteria? Well, I have a question about just generically about uh, uh, fuel storage. I seem to recall that when we approved the um, heating oil uh, storage facility that's there on Route 12, uh, they were required to have a, uh, a catchment area right underneath it that could hold um, the contents of the largest uh, tank that they had uh, with the idea that uh, in case of, uh, and actually some extra in case of rain, and then also, of course, put a cover on it. Um, I don't know the regulations around that, honestly, <laughs> but um, I don't see anything here. And so I, I'm just going on uh, what we did five years ago, six years ago. Does anyone have any clarification or reason why we wouldn't do that here? Um, this is Derek with Essex Equipment. Yes. My interpretation is, did those folks have double wall tanks with interstitial space? I'm not no. sure. Okay. They did not. They did right. not. So I think, I think that's the difference. If you're, if you're proposing to install a single wall tank, then you do need that catchment uh, below the tank mm -hmm. with, with this setup with a double wall tank and any leak it's set up, it's designed so that any leak that happens is going to go into the interstitial space right. and you'll be, you'll see that there is actually, um, an issue. Okay. And that, John, I, that's, can, that, that, I can confirm that that's, that's the, uh, regulatory requirements. Okay. Uh, the, the town here has a similar type of, for, for their, some of their fuel tanks. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, John. Okay, so waiver criteria. The proposed, the first one is the proposed land development will not alter the essential char character of the area or district in which the property is located. I think you've spoken to that some. Um, is there anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, I don't think so. I'll just reiterate that this is a light industrial area. I believe I'm correct in saying that. And, and I feel like, uh, this type of business and the situation the the setup with these tanks fits into that, that criteria. Okay. Anybody have any comments or questions? I just confirmed that it is the light industrial zoning district. Okay. Number two, the proposed land development will not substantially or permanently impair the lawful use or development of adjacent property. I think it speaks for itself. Uh, if I can answer any questions that anyone has on that. Anybody have questions? Well, we don't know what the development of the adjacent property will be. Well, right. right. Um, I'm, okay. Again, I would, I would go back to, again, I would go back to the light industrial zoning. Right. What are the proximity, uh, uh, or, you know, distance requirements for tanks, uh, from say a, a building or structure? I see you have it somewhere around 50 feet away from that right. structure. Right. So I did. Yeah. So this is Derek with Essex Equipment. I, mm -hmm. I did meet with the park marshal um, on Monday, actually mm -hmm. Monday at nine o'clock. I asked him that question and he didn't have an answer for me. Um, but <laughs> when I showed him the proposed the proposed site, he was he was said no problem, that's fine. So okay. I actually measured it out. It's between fifty and fifty five feet from the building, right. which I think is is more than good. I and and I appreciate that. I'm I'm just thinking if we were to carry that over to the adjacent property. Uh, that would force their structure, if we assume it's 50 feet, and I don't know that it is, you know, you, you know we don't have that for sure, but assuming it were 50 feet, then that would push their setback greater than 25 feet. It would have to be another 12 and a half feet, so uh, 37 yeah. and a half feet away from that tank, assuming, you know, that, I'm making an assumption, obviously. Sure, and, that, and that 50, and that yes. 50 or 55 foot mark is, is just where... It, it makes sense for us 
Okay. That isn't that it, that isn't a, a distance that's been stated by any any of the authorities, fire marshal, or anyone else. Okay, John, I can just state that the town's yes. tanks are are butt up against the building here. So. <laughs> so, uh, uh, <laughs> that that gives me great comfort, Tom. <laughs> uh, uh, my, 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 my sense is that there's because right. it's double walled. It's mm -hmm. there's there's uh, uh, little or no further regulation. Okay, cool. excellent. You're gonna stay on Zoom forever, time. John? No, no, yeah. no, going back to the town hall, town office. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> What's that glow? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> okay, number three: the proposed land development will not be detrimental to public health, safety, or welfare. Um, <laughs> anything to add okay. to that uh i would take questions i don't see how it possibly can any questions no i mean i, I guess I mean, I mean, no, go ahead. Just, just ask the applicants is this typical to your other operations yes it is uh very typical um we have actually two locations in essex one side of of Kellogg Road is the rental side, and the other side is a dealership for Kubota equipment. And we have similar setups at both of those locations. Well, as long as we're talking safety, I guess that sort of relates to the the point of of the uh, uh, the waiver is to um, uh, the direction of traffic and flow and so forth and i'm looking at the diagram and it looks as though there are, i guess there are two white lines of some kind coming from the building sort of parallel to how the tank is laid out can you tell me mm -hmm. what those are i don't have that in front of me so oh. i would uh, is it a loading yeah. dock yes this is ron but that's just equipment what I'm assuming there, Derek, is that the, there's a, a drop-down loading dock on the far uh, door. Okay. I'll call it the southern door again. Okay. Um, and that's part of the reason for the setback of the tanks is to get them so they sit back away from that loading dock area. That's kind of what it looked like to me. I, and I was thinking that it's really the loading dock that is the issue in terms of traffic flow, right? <laughs> Um, yeah, if that loading well, dock were not there, it looks like traffic flow, the way you've, assuming that you've marked it with that sort of red and white kind of arrowy pattern in there or something like that. I'm not quite sure, but it looks like, um, uh, it's just, uh, first flush. Yes. The, the, the loading dock isn't as much of a concern for us, um, as is the, the vehicular traffic coming in through that if you will, southern entrance would we would see as our main entrance to to the property. And a customer may come in, do their business and and, and go out that same entrance or or proceed through by the other building and go out the northern entrance, I guess if you will. Mm -hmm. So if you were, uh, and I would assume that uh, you were saying that when they return equipment, they, uh, you refuel, so I assume they would park next to that tank or is that where the refueling would be so they would yeah so they would pull up um if you will if you're looking from the road at the loading dock which mm -hmm. is now identified to the left of that and up near the building would be the return unloading area okay yeah so this is ron with essex again uh typically you know when the customers return equipment like that what they do is they unload it off of their trailer and then our employees take the piece of the equipment and, and move it over to the fuel area and I actually see. fuel it. So the customers okay. are not the ones that are doing any of the fueling. It is our employees that, that handle all that. That makes sense. And then is the fueling actually, it looks as though if the equipment were right next to the fuel tank towards the interior of the property, it would block that loading dock. So I would guess you're going to refuel maybe on the short end of the the loading, again, this is wrong with Essex. We, we expect very limited traffic to our loading dock. Most of the any uh, traffic flow or equipment transfer is going to be done by our own roll-off truck. Mm -hmm. um, at this point, we will not have any 
outside vendors or outside trucking companies coming in and actually delivering equipment to that okay. area. Everything will be fed out of our Essex store from our own trucks, basically. And those are we, you know roll-off type trucks that they can uh, load off the truck itself and not actually have to use the loading dock. But obviously, at some point, that may change a little bit, hence why we want to keep the tanks back away from that loading dock area if we need that in the future. Okay. Well, I appreciate the clarification. Thank you. Okay, anything else on this one? We'll move on to number four. The proposed land development is beneficial or necessary for the continued reasonable use of the property. I think uh, it's a tough one. <laughs> well, I think we've kind of heard, heard, heard <laughs> why this is beneficial to the use of the property. Um, but if you, did you want to add anything? I don't have anything, Ron. Do you have anything to add? I mean, no, I mean, other than the fact of, of uh, the last thing we'd want to do is, is uh, haul a lot of fuel around in, in uh, gas cans or diesel cans in order to, to, to support the products coming in and out the door. So, yeah, it, you know, having a safe way to, to handle our fuel is, is, is definitely, uh, you know, a priority. I guess I would add one thing that I didn't mention earlier is that to these tanks, uh, we will be pouring a concrete pad anchoring these these tanks to the pad um so it's it's really it's it's going to be done properly uh it won't be just a couple of two or three tanks sitting on the ground um so we we realize the importance of of the environment and and we're doing everything as as best we can to make it safe and work for for everyone in this situation so derek so assuming uh the the waiver request is approved you'll be following up with a separate application for the actual installation of those tanks correct including that concrete pad and such that is correct thank you okay does anyone have questions on this criteria or anything else i just want to make sure christy has the applicants names Chris did you get get everything from them um I think I just missed Ron's last name yes that's spelled c-a-d-o-r-e-t-t-e -T -T -E, okay got it thank you sure there's a duck outside my window quacking at me can you hear it <laughs> no actually <laughs> That's not a duck. That's, a Bob. That's Bobby saying, why are you taking over his meeting? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if no one has any further questions, and if the applicant has provided all the information they feel relevant, I would entertain a motion to close this hearing. So uh, move. This is John. Second tour. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Can you just say your name and I? Molly, I. Or I. John, I. Ella, I. <laughs> okay, so the thank you for the information. And um, time wise, it, it would be we, what is it, Tom, 30 days or 45 days? 30, 45 days with COVID. Okay. So you okay, can expect well, something in that time frame. Great. Thank you all very much for your time. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. So I suppose we have to approve minutes. Is that true? Oh. Uh, Can't find my agenda. I didn't put any minutes no. on there. Oh, you There's... didn't? Oh, well, no, you did mention approval of minutes, but you didn't indicate any particular ones but there were the, the collins minutes christy is done right uh you have the july 7th minute to approve that collins that's um, what it is uh-huh collins and v trans oh oh yes mm -hmm. yeah have have you gotten bob's comments christy I, I, I yeah, have been, 
And have we seen that? I know he's sent them, but have do we want to do this or do we want to wait till next time? Tom, Bob, Bob, I was ahead of the comments. Yeah, I would suggest wait for Bob. Okay, yeah. that sounds good. So I guess the next thing is to go into the motion to go into deliberative session. This is how I so move to go into the deliberative session. And John, second. It's seven twenty-six. So excuse uh, me. So I'm going to move Orca into our waiting room, or uh, we likely will not have any business coming out of here. Is that correct, Madam Chair? That's correct. So uh, Orca, um, you, I think you can feel free to to. Um, uh leave this meeting 